It's been a week of disappointing outcomes in the sumo world. Let's have a little look at why. You may recall we were supposed to be getting a new concussion protocol this week. Well, we haven't really got one. Sumo chiefs had the relevant meeting, but according to Chief Judge Isegahama, decided simply to put down in writing what they improvised last week. There's no mention of a doctor, a fixed place for the concussed wrestler to go, or how his condition is to be assessed. The judges must simply convene, buy time, and assess the wrestler themselves, and order him to default if, and only if, they deem him unfit to fight. It seems they agree with columnists who claim sumo is a spectacle not to be weighed down by reality, and with ex-wrestlers who claim concussions are part and parcel. We hoped that social distancing needs might at least have encouraged sumo chiefs to look into a computer-generated rankings chart based only on the wrestler data. That way, even fighters not competing could be re-ranked based on several indicators. But a full year into the pandemic, and the chart is still being decided by 20 or so coaches placing counters bearing wrestler names on a giant sheet, then negotiating up or down. And we still don't have a clear rankings policy for virus victims. Last September, you may recall, the absent Tamanoi men were all allowed to keep rank. This week, only the virus-related absentees in lower divisions were. Those at salaried level, such as Enho, Wakataka Kage, and Kaisei, have likely had their ranks changed. We've tried to be fair to everyone, Coach Isegahama said, but couldn't explain exactly what his team had done, seeming to argue only that wrestlers keeping rank gain the unfair advantage of knowing exactly who they'll face. Well, in that case, every Yokozuna and Ozeki fixture list ever made must be unfair. And we have to believe that most wrestlers don't religiously study others' scores to work out who they're facing for themselves anyway. If sumo chiefs want genuine fairness, why not come up with a computer algorithm which calculates everything through the same processes? That same lack of consistency is evident in sumo's antivirus rules. It seems coach Tokitsukaze is on his way out after being caught breaking those inconsistent rules once again. Last September, he went all the way to Miyazaki to take part in a friend's golf tournament. This time, he's been accused of paying visits to mahjong parlors and parlors of a more intimate kind during the last tournament. Tokitsukaze claims he was merely delivering tickets to the former and receiving regular massages at the latter, claims which have been denied by other sources and ridiculed by other coaches. Sumo press chief Shibatayama last night refused to confirm reports that Tokitsukaze has already resigned, and hinted that even if he has, his papers might not be accepted until the compliance committee has had a chance to rule on and punish him. But let's be clear. Firstly, Tokitsukaze's activities are not uncommon among sumo coaches. All his peers really have the right to judge him on is the timing and the fact he got caught. In the same period, it must be added, that his second son, Shoma, was making major sacrifices to compete in the New Year Schools sumo event by placing himself in a seven-day COVID-secure bubble. And secondly, sumo's rules on going out are just a mess. Outside of tournaments, we've seen title winners visit Tottori and Kumamoto, new Sekitori visit Hokkaido and attend large parties, Kotoshogiku go to the hot springs in Yugawara, and other wrestlers drop into their local supporters' club offices. Even during tournaments, we've seen thousands of fans gather untested, and wrestler support groups, including 93-year-old members, gather for public viewings in a state of emergency, and praised by journalists for taking adequate corona measures. Now against this backdrop, can we really blame Tokitsukaze for thinking that life simply goes on as normal, but with a mask? Finally, we thought we were getting a tournament in Osaka this March. 
Despite all the virus cases and declarations of emergency, sumo chiefs ploughed on, raised every Osakan's hopes, not least those of the tea houses, and insisted on-the-ground preparations were going just fine. Until Thursday, that is, when they announced that a tournament in Osaka would be too risky after all, and March 2021 will be in Tokyo. The question hanging over all these stories I've covered here is, why the lack of criteria? Why the randomness and the short-termism? And the only answer I can find is that generally, when presented with a crisis, the Japanese way is to glorify the existing tools and insist that they alone can fix the problem. But I'm not sure Sumo's existing tools can. <laughs>